Okay, in this video, we're going to go over uh, sections 4.1 to 4.3, and our first section in that will be a review of exponents. So when we think about exponents, we want to think about our exponent rules. So we've been working a great deal with e to the x. So what if you had e to the x plus e to the 5x? Could you do anything to make that simpler? And the answer is going to be no. What if you had e to the x plus 7e to the x? What could you do there? Since you have a 7 here, you have a 1 here, you could end up with 8e to the x. Okay, think about that. Now, what usually comes up for us is if we have e to the x times an e to the, let's say, 3x. In this situation, you write the base once and you add your exponents so you get e to the 4x. Another situation which frequently arises is if you have a quotient. So if I have e to the 7x over e to the third, I could write the base once and I would subtract the exponents. So think of this, this is an important topic. Do you know your exponent rules? Because that will make a difference in how you handle this quiz. On the next slide we'll do part two. Okay, so given this opening statement, I'm going to write each expression either as base 2 or base 3. So what if I gave you 8 to the, let's say, 8 squared to the k. And you have to write in either base 2 or base 3. What I want you to recognize is that, and we'll make this kx. Well, let me change that. So hold on one sec. Let's make that, okay, that's going to be to the 2x. All right, so looking at 8, I know that 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So my first step is to make this 2 to the 3rd, and then that's all raised to the 2x. My next step is going to be to multiply power to power and I get 2 to the 6x. And that's in this form right here because I have base 2, my k would be 6, and my x is x. So that works out. What if I had something like 1 over 27 to the 3x? What would that look like? Well, looking at this, I know that 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. So that's 3 cubed raised to the 3x. So I'm not done yet because I have to get it in this form since now I'm base 3. So do you understand that you can write 3 to the 3rd when it's in the denominator as 3 to the negative 3 when it's in the numerator? And I'm still not quite done because I'm looking for that final form. So my final answer would be 3 to the negative 9x. And that solves, solves the requirement that I'm in base 3 raised to some kx. In this situation, our k would be negative 9. Okay, next topic on the next slide. Okay, our job in this section is to solve for x. So we're going to use unique base to do that. So what if I had e to the 5x, and that has to equal e to the 6th. Since I have the same base, in order for the left side to equal the right side, my exponents have to be equal. So 5x has to equal 6. So x is going to equal 6 over 5. Notice I didn't say anything about canceling out the e's. 
you're not canceling out the E's. Your attention is focused up here on the exponents. Okay, let's do another one. What if I say I'm given something like e to the x times x minus 5, and that equals 0. And I have to find the x that satisfies that. Well, the first thing I want you to notice is that this feature can never equal 0. And that's because this function looks like this, so therefore there are no roots. So for this entire expression to equal 0, the second factor has to equal 0. So in this case, x equals 5. And these are the two basic types of solve for x problems that you will see. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. The fourth general topic we're covering in this section is being able to read from a graph. So this graph has both the function in black and the slope of the function in red. So in general, if they ask you what is the, um, um, at week two, how much money are we earning in some endeavor? Because I have money on the left side, so on the y-axis, and I have weeks on the x-axis. So if I say in week two, how much money am I earning? So and I'll have this be thousands of dollars. So you would read off of f of x. So week two would be right here, and you'd be earning, say, $5,000. All right? Now, what if I say, when do I earn money at the greatest rate? Well, the greatest rate is where my f of x is the steepest, and my f of x is the steepest um, at the max of the first derivative. So let's look where it's the steepest. So right here is the steepest. So I'll do this one in blue. So I'm going to say that's the steepest. So when does that happen? Well, my units go by ones in the bottom, one, two, three. So it'd be week three. And what's the rate of earning at week three? So you're going to read across, and you're almost at four, so let's say we're at three point five thousand dollars per week is my rate of earning. So be able to tell the difference between one function and the other. Even if I gave you the equation, you would not use the equation if I asked you to read from the graph. So remember, f of x is just your function. Whenever you see words like rate, or rate of change, so change, or slope, clearly they're speaking about first derivative. Okay, so make sure you understand the, the graphs that we did from the homework. Okay, topic five is differentiating exponential functions. So, for example, the general rule is this. If I ask you to take the derivative with respect to x of, let's say, 14 e to the 3x, what you would do is you would say this is in the form ke to the f of x. And taking that, uh, uh, the differential, or taking the first derivative, I would write down exactly what I see, which would be k e to the f of x, and then I'd multiply that by f prime of x. So how am I doing it, given that this is my equation? So if I'm taking the, the uh, first derivative of 14 e to the 3x, I would write down 14 e to the 3x, and then I would multiply the whole thing by the derivative of the exponent, which would just be 3. So I can combine like terms. 3 times 14 is going to be 42. And then I have e to the 3x. Now remember, we can also have some trig in here. So what if I said 
take the derivative with respect to x, and we'll say we have um, 2e to the sine of 3x. Okay, taking the first derivative, I write down exactly what I have. So that's going to be 2e to the sine of 3x. And then I take the derivative of just the exponent. The derivative of sine 3x would be cosine 3x times the derivative of the angle, which would be 3. So when I simplify things, that's going to be 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And then I think I'll put my cosine 3x right there. And then I have e to the sine 3x. So be able to take all these kind of um, differentials. Know what your rules are. Whenever you can get your equation or your function into this form, k okay, e to the f of x, do so so that you can just continue to practice the same method. Okay, we have another topic coming up on the next slide. Okay, trying to find relative maxes or mins. Your first step, or your first task, is to go ahead and take the first derivative and then second equal to zero and solve for the x that would make that true. So let's try that here. So taking my first derivative, what I notice right away is that I have two functions. Here's one function. Here's another function. They both have x's in them. I have to do the product rule. So I'm going to say my derivative equals left, which is e3x plus 2, d right, which is just 7, plus right, which is 7x, d left, which is going to be e to the 3x plus 2 times 3. All right, we're going to take a second just to clean this up. And I'm going to bring the 7 in front, and I have e3x plus 2 plus, let's bring the 3 with the 7 and the x, so I have 21x, and I have e to the 3x plus 2. Now, knowing that I have to figure out where the relative max or min is, I'm going to be setting this equal to 0 and solving for x. My first thing is to get this answer in factored form. So what do they have in common? Looks like they have a 7 and they have an e to the 3x plus 2 in common. Okay, so we want to get our factors. So the factors will be 1 plus 3x. Set that to 0. And then, very important thing to remember, this exponential function can never go to 0. So the only way that this expression will equal 0 is if 1 plus 3x equals 0. So where does that happen? So we can say 1 plus 3x equals 0. Then we can say 1 equals negative 3x. Divide both sides by negative 3. And we get x equals negative 1 third. That is a potential max or min. In order to verify whether it is a max or min, you would take the second derivative and evaluate it where x is negative 1 third. And we talked about that in great detail. When you evaluate the second derivative, if when you plug in x equals negative 1 third, your f prime prime is greater than 0, so if it's greater than 0, you are concave up and you have a min. If your f prime prime is less than 0, your function is concave down and you have found a max. So make sure you go over that. That's from a while ago, but we did relate first and, and second derivative tests to evaluating whether a critical value 
and this x right here would be my critical value, whether that will yield a max or a min. Okay, topic number seven is going to be finding the equation of a tangent line. So let's think about that for a second. Let's say that we have some function and it is y equals e to the x. We'll make it very simple. Okay, and I want to know the equation of the tangent line to that curve where x equals 1 and y equals e. All right, so our first job is to find y prime and y prime is just going to be e to the x. So then what is y prime where x is 1? Well, that's just going to be e to the 1 or e. Okay, equation of tangent lines. We need this format. And remember, I'm just going to be consistent here. Since I'm dealing with y's, this is y prime evaluated at, in this situation, where x is 1, times x minus x1. Let's plug in what they gave us. So this y1 is just d, and x1 is just 1, and our slope is just d. So let's see what we have. y minus y1 we said is e, or e to the first, equals the slope at 1 was e to the first times x minus 1. All right, be able to take any slope and put uh, it in a form, this point slope form, that is the equation of the tangent line drawn to that curve. So go over that topic as well. So this gives you a very quick overview of what we're doing as you prepare for the 4143 quiz.